we are here near a military airport so it's a no-fly zone you have to get special license as I live here in this uh, chalet I know how to do it and I get all the times free licenses so for the five Zenit shots we take it from the ground after landing directly after landing so you can position the drone at about plus 16 degrees and take in four directions four images and the last image at 90 degrees and be sure that you have the right settings like in the pano shooting there are different settings possible between a pano shooting and a single shooting so always get into the memory the aperture and also the exposure time also the ISO value so that you have the, the right values Now let's compare the result of the two aircrafts. With the Mavic 2 we get 28,000 pixels per line, with the Mavic 3 24,000. I cannot see really a difference between the image quality from these two aircrafts. Only for the image quality it's not necessary to upgrade to the Mavic 3. But there are other points we will discuss later. As I mentioned before we are in a no-fly zone, so we have to get license to fly here. Then we have to import them into the aircraft. At this place I am limited in altitude at about 60 meters. On the FlySafe homepage from DJI you can unlock zones. So we will get free license to import into the aircraft. Now let's talk about settings in the DJI Fly app. The most important point is that you always shoot in manual mode not in auto mode and you have to prepare single shooting and also the panorama shooting with the same settings then we use always manual uh, white balance and uh, more, uh, very important always the raw format for the zenit shots and also for the panorama shooting so the big difference is that in the single shot and on the panorama shooting you have to select raw that are not the same settings for panorama and for single shooting. So be aware what you have chosen from the exposure time and also for the white balance and the other settings. For both drones we can use also the aperture so you can play with the aperture to have the, the right settings. Now we can see the shooting with the DJI Fly Up and Dynamic 3. And for each panorama always choose the right settings to have the right light and also the right uh, white balance. I mostly use ISO 100 that gives us the best resolution for the final image. Let's speed up the pano shooting. And then after landing choose a place where you can go where we have a clear horizon so we take the five zenit shots it's about 60 degrees uh, pitch angle from the aircraft so i have go quite a little bit to have the right place i will not have the threes on the, the image so it's important that you choose the right place and for this shooting always use the same settings for the camera like in the panorama shooting Then we take four shoots at about 60 degrees in each direction and the final shot at plus 90 degrees straight into the sky. If you use the inbuilt panorama function you will have the panorama shooting under pano and the single zenit shots under DJI in the name. 
We will see later in this video how we handle this. So now what you can see, that's my own app, HDR panel. So we do not use the inbuilt function for the panorama shooting with the Mavic 2. We use a full spherical grid. The full spherical grid uses less images and gives us better stitching quality. So here you can see the panorama shooting into my app. You can also see the your status bar. That's very important if you will align the Zenit shots. You can always check the precision of the aircraft. And one of the big difference between the inbuilt DJI function is also the dynamic EV. So for each pitch angle we change the exposure time. Dynamic EV means that with each pitch angle we have different exposure settings. That's very important to get a good light results even with the nadir shots or the shots near the, the button. If you don't use uh, dynamic EV you will have darker images if you go to the ground with the aircraft. In my app I use the same settings for the panorama shooting and for the scenic shots. So it's always important that you have the same settings like on the horizon. Now let's see how we stitch together the images. PTUA. So we choose the developed uh, images. We import them and then we align the images. Now what we can see, we have the Zenit shots, it's even calculated uh, right here, but we cannot uh, create the panorama. So here is a possibility to uh, align again the images, so we will do that. But it's still not possible to, to get the, the panorama. What we do here is uh, we import the XML file. We optimize. Just wait. Now we can we can uh, calculate the panorama. So that's one of the important step that we first create the XML file from our shooting so that we can import it into the PTGUI stitching tool. What we uh, can see here is this um, violet uh, lens flare that's typical for the Mavic 2 shootings. If we create here the uh, panorama we will get, we will have more uh, pixel like for the Mavic 3. Now let's see what we get from the aircraft with the DJI Fly app from the Mavic 3. What you can see here on the screen are raw images. So from the panorama shooting we have panorama 1 to panorama 25 DNG file and we have 5 Zenit shots. And the five Zenit shots, they are saved uh, after the shooting. So they are uh, saved here as DJI files. So we have to search these files into two uh, folders on the aircraft. For each panorama we get a folder, but for the Zenit shots we have to use the image folder. Now, uh, what can we do to get here the XML file? It's important that you use this raw shooting. You do not uh, um, develop these images, you do not manipulate these images, you copy it simple from the aircraft. And now what we will do, we will create from this shooting the XML file. To create the XML file, we use the XML creator. It's uh, available for Windows and also for Mac OS. And it's free. 
so we have different uh, possibilities what we can do here first is that we have uh, different aircrafts we can simulate what we get if we uh, optimize and then we create decimal but that's actually not possible with the Mavic 3 as we have no SDK from DJI we cannot do this kind of shootings so what we will do is we create the XML from the EXIF for this reason we copy all the files into a folder as I have shown you before and then we select this folder so it's this one and now you can see we have the five Zenit shots and we have this typical alignment like a snake from the inbuilt uh, DJI panorama shooting we can also have a look on the XML file here and then we save this XML file now let's compare two images single images from the panel shooting between the Mavic 2 and the Mavic 3 so we can see the quality is quite equal but what is now the advantage of the Mavic 3 the Mavic 3 has several advantages it's the flight time it's huge and also the stability in the air that's one of the big difference but not actually the image quality and remember that you get more pixels with the Mavic 2 I hope you enjoyed this video until the next time thank you